Hi everyone, it's Unit 5, Day 3. Um, today's a little bit of a tough day for a flip video because um, they're word problems and it's a little bit lengthy on the writing. So I'm going to try to keep it as reasonable as I can, but at the same time you've got to get the information. So I'm going to do the best I can here to make it um, not too difficult. Today's topic is growth and decay, exponential growth and decay. And you did have the general formula in Algebra 1. Um, and you may or may not remember that. So the general formula, sometimes I call it the generic, is just y equals a 1 plus r to t, or y equals a 1 minus r to t, where t stands for time, r stands for rate, a stands for like the initial amount or the starting amount and then Y is your ending amount. Alright, so you would use this formula when it talks about, you know, you just putting money in the bank, you get 3% interest, how much will you have after five years? Just a generic general growth. Um, decay is typically shown as depreciation in a car or something like that, like you know, you buy a car, the rate of depreciation is 12%. How much will it be after three years? Um, and you would just plug everything in and then go right to the calculator and just type it straight in and get an answer. Um, sometimes you see this in science as well when they talk about bacteria or different things growing um, or species in the wild going extinct and things, you know, decaying. You'll also see this in chemistry when you do half-life, same idea. So this you've kind of seen before, and I'm going to show you all the formulas first, and then we'll do the examples after. So this is just the generic one. The next one is the one that we use for compound interest, when interest is compounded continuously. So this is when you're putting money into an account, and you're going to get compound interest continually, which means they're going to give you interest and then the next day you're going to earn interest on your interest. This formula looks like P E R T. Where again, why is your ending amount? That didn't change. Ending amount. P is your starting amount, but when we're investing money, it's typically called a, the principal. So it is still the money that you're starting out with, your $100 or $5,000 or whatever you have, but it's principal. Um, T is time, R is rate, same way. But these are raised up high, okay? These are exponents. And then the question of E, this is definitely something that I don't think you've seen before. So E stands for epsilon. It is an irrational epsilon. <laughs> Whoops. I spelled that wrong, it should look like that, which is like a small Greek letter, and it's like pi, it is an irrational number. So when you think pi, everyone knows 3.14, you might know more of it, 5.8, epsilon is 2.718, yada, yada, yada. It keeps going, it doesn't repeat, and it does not terminate. And there is no substitution for this. So you're going to have a rate and a time and an amount of principal, but this is actually an E, and it's typed on your calculator. On your 84, it's under second division, I believe, or second caret or second ln. On the Inspire, it's down there by the I. I'm going to grab an Inspire. I don't know if I can show this real fast. So Remember here where we went to grab the i, see the pi, and there's the infinity, and there's your e. So this is where your e comes in. And there's some of the digits for that. All right, so when it says you have $500, you put it in the bank, the rate of interest is 3%. How much will you have after 20 years? If they tell you the interest is compound continuously, that's when we're going to use this formula. And then there's one more formula, which is when you get in interest can compounded but in a different way, compounded quarterly or monthly or annually or semi-annually. So last one, if interest is compounded some other way other than continuous, just compound interest 
quarterly, monthly, annually, something like that. There's another formula for that. And that formula is P1 plus R over N raised to the NT. Where again, P is the principal, that's the money you're investing. Y again is the money at the end. I guess we could call it money at the start, money at the end. R is rate, T is time, but the N in this example is the number of times you're going to get interest. Number of times they give you interest. So if it's annually, N equals 1. If it's semi-annually, N equals 2. Quarterly, N equals 4. Um, monthly, N equals 12. And of course, weekly, N would equal 52. Now think about what happens if it was annually. If N is 1, it would be R over 1, 1 times time, and then it's going to look just like the first formula I gave you, the generic. But typically, I tell students, when you see the word compound, you know it's one of these two new formulas. right? Compound is the new stuff. And then you just have to say, if it's continuous, it's this one that the word kind of looks like PERT, P-E-R-T. If it's any other way, compounded, quarterly, monthly, semi-annually, then it's this formula. And essentially, once you've got the formulas memorized, which is probably the most challenging part, everything just plugs right into the formula, and then you go right to the calculator and just type it in in one step. All right, a couple quick examples for you. Um, again, because I know it's a little bit lengthy today with all the formulas, um, there's not really a quick way to attack this. Um, example one. Let's say Ray buys a car for $21,500. Rate of depreciation is 11%. How much will the car be worth after five years? They might say like to the nearest dollar or nearest cent or nearest hundred or something like that even. But we'll go nearest dollar after five years. <coughs> Sorry. So of course since it doesn't say anything about interest, this is not money in a bank, nothing about the word compounding, it's just our generic growth and decay formula, the one that you um, actually had an Algebra 1, but because it's depreciation and things are going to be worth less, it's this one where we're subtracting. A is the initial amount of the car, which is 21.5. The rate, if you want to put 11% in, you can. Raise to the 5 years, T for time. <clears throat> if you're on the older calculator, you would have to write either percent over 100, like 11 over 100, or you would have to bump the decimal and write 0.11. For when you type it in here, it has to be in decimal form. If you're on the newer calculator, the Inspire does have a percent key. So I'm going to go 21,500, 1 minus 11. And then for percent, um, carry up to the 5. Oh, shoot, remember how it always does that? It's going to return that. I'm going to grab that again and do a Control-Enter to make the decimal. So it would be worth $12,005.70. They had said nearest dollar, so we'll do $12,006. So my answer here is 12006 because it asked for nearest dollar. <clears throat> the percent key is right down here by the G, 
see this little question mark flag key? That gives you some um, other symbols that we may need, and that's where you use the percent. If you would rather type in, <coughs> sorry, if you'd rather just type in 0.11 here, that's fine, and not use the percent key. And then remember that I should have just hit Control Enter every time. It'll give you the decimal right away. Um, your last question always should be, does this seem reasonable to you, um, especially when we're talking about these word problems. This may or may not seem reasonable. It's not worth very much, so sometimes students think that's incorrect, but that's actually a pretty reasonable number. Depreciation is brutal on a car, and as soon as you drive it off the lot, you've probably heard it often happens that it's you know already worth um, half or something like that. People always exaggerate about how much it depreciates. Um, okay, we'll do one or two more and we'll be finished for today. Now I've got Dan investing $1,000. This is our example two. Dan's going to invest um, $1,000 um, in a bank with a 2% rate of interest compounded semi-annually. With 2% interest compounded semi-annually. Um, how much will he have after, I have five years again, it's just a coincidence that I put five twice, I don't know, but how much will he have, let's change it up to seven years, will he have after seven years? <clears throat> Alright, so when you're deciding what formula to use, you're looking at this word compound. As soon as you see compound, you know it's one of the new ones, the pert and the other one that also has a P in it. Uh, my kids last year used to call that parent, pert and parent, because it kind of looks like the word parent. Um, but if it's compound continuously, that's the pert one. If it's compounded some other way, that's the one that is the other one that kind of looks like the word parent, I guess, in a way. So here's your formula. You are going to strive to memorize these. But I'll tell you on the regions, 99% of the time they give you the formula, there has been one or two times when they have not provided the formula and you had to know it. So that's why we're going to try to memorize them. Do your best. Okay, again, P is principal. It's the amount of money you're investing. 1 plus, our rate is 2%. And N is the number of times you're going to get interest. Because it said semi-annually, that means twice a year. That's going to be a 2 and up here it's 2 times 7 for that NT up at the top. And then again, I would type this right in your calculator one step. And I, I encourage that in a lot of our other units as well, but really in this one. If you try to do this math yourself and then raise, it always seems like something goes wrong there. And it's so simple to just type one step. So 1,000, 1 plus, and then I'm going to open a fraction. 2, again, I'm going to put the percent because I don't even want to take a chance that I'll goof that up all over 2, whoops, I think I have to close there, carrot, 2 times 7 equals, oh man, I did it again, <laughs> control enter would be a lot better every time, right? And there's my amount, 114947. Kind of coincidental that it just gave me cents right away, which was kind of interesting, but it's just a straight type in. You should probably be using the squiggles if we're rounding, but I don't have to round this time because it looks like it's exactly that amount. And that's it. Um, let's show one of the PERT, the other formula, and then we'll be done for today only because, like I said, these are a little bit lengthy on the writing. All right, here's our last one. Let's do Missy invests $2,000 at a rate of 4% interest compounded continuously. If you take a, a business class called Money, Credit, and Banking this year or next year, you will learn even more about this stuff. And if you pay attention to it a little bit on the news or on the commercials, you sometimes might hear different banks advertising things like this. Uh, Missy invests $2,000 at a rate of 4% interest compounded continually. Um, how much will she have after um, 
Let's do 15 years. She's going to leave it a long time. When you're deciding on the formula, again, as soon as you see compound, it means one of the new formulas. And compound continuously is the one that sort of looks like the word pert. So it's P E to the R T. P is our principal, which is $2,000. Remember, E does not get replaced with anything. E is really an E. And then it's 4% times 15 years. And again, I would type that one step right in the calculator. Um, I'll show you where the E is on the Inspire. I think we just did, but we'll do it one more time. All right, I'm going to do a clear that out just so I can squeeze it right there. 2,000. Um, for the E, you want to go on the pi key, just the same place we found the I, but there's my E. And then carry up to the 4%, which is by the G key, times 15. So after 15 years, she's going to have 36, 44, 24. And that's it. Okay, so for today, the idea was to introduce the three formulas um, and then to practice just plugging different amounts and variables and things in and making sure that you can put things into this correctly and get the answer out correctly. Um, after two more days, we're going to use logarithms to actually say, you know, how long will it take Missy to earn $5,000 or how long will it take for her money to double or triple or whatever. But at this point, we don't have the skills yet to solve for that. All you're going to be doing is given all the parts and choose the right formula and plug in and make sure that you can get it into the calculator and get a correct answer. Um, if you're not using the Inspire and you have some different questions about the percent or the caret or the E, make sure that you come in and get them answered. And that's it for today. Um, thanks. Have a great night, and I'll see you tomorrow, everyone.